Everyone has nightmares. But for actors, they can take a very different form because their worst nightmares happen when they are wide awake. <laughs> Hi, I'm Luann Moldovan, and welcome to The Actor's Nightmare. We have a great story today, but before we get into it, I want to thank our sponsors who have been so supportive of the show. First, a big shout out to Artists Repertory Theatre, Portland's premier regional theatre company, producing intimate, provocative shows that provide a home for a diverse community of artists where they can thrive and take risks. Check out their 2019-2020 season at www.artistsrep.org. Also, thanks so much to our patrons, Bob Conklin, and to Len and Susan Magazine and their company, Real Estats, providing statistical overviews for residential real estate in Oregon and Washington. Check them out at www.realestats.net. And of course, we are so grateful for the studio at North Rim, where we record our podcast. If you want to do a show, check them out at studio at North Rim. Dot com. All right, so today we have in the studio Elizabeth Huffman. Hello. Glad to have you here today. Thank you, thank you. Good to be here. I like to think of you as the Renaissance woman of the theater. You, <laughs> yes, you direct, you act. That sounds so old, the way I No, 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 no. The notion of, you know, you do everything. You, yeah. If the costuming needs help or it's not up to speed, you're diving in there, you're out there shopping, you're costuming, you're building, you're playing with the music, you know, it's like you're an octopus. You've got all your tentacles. <laughs> Some could say it's a control freak. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I, I didn't say that. No, <laughs> no but truly, I, um, it's been Thank my you. pleasure to work with you and know you. And speaking, well, before I get into that example, I did want to ask you, I remember that you started in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. and When I was six. <laughs> okay. Literally started acting when I was six. Because you knew at that age. Never, ever varied my path. Wow. I was always going to be an actor or a dancer mm -hmm. or something, yeah. And then you went to college. Briefly, but, yes, I but did. But you took that very exciting tangent to Oxford. That was later. Was that it? Was actually much later. Okay. Yeah. Um, I went to college, you know, right out of high school. And, um, yeah, um, I was in college for two years when I was advised by my college advisor, mentor, to go to New York. Stupidest advice I've ever had. But oh, I did. I went yeah. to New York. Yeah. Well, how could you resist that? I mean, right. really. And right. you're young and sure. like, I'm ready. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was so not ready. <laughs> right. And we had a crossover in L.A. And you were there... You've helped found the classic theater? Uh, no. Um, I came in, Roger Hendrick Simon actually started the classic theater lab down at LATC in LA. And mm -hmm. uh, I came in from, I had a company in New York. And then I came in, called the Beacon Project. And, um, and when I decided to move to Los Angeles, I came in and I had friends who were in the classic theater lab and I started working with them, actually, first as a director. And then eventually as an actor, and then I became the artistic director. Which you did years later in yeah. Portland at the Classic Greek Theater. That's right. So I was uh, referring moments ago about we, ha we have a shared background. We and, sure do. And, uh, and then we had the pleasure of working together. And uh, on the original piece that was based on a play about Marie Antoinette, mm -hmm. And then it expanded, we expanded, and you wrote, rewrote this into an original play, a one-woman show. And thanks to your connections, <laughs> we went to Germany with we it. We did. So I want you to talk a bit about what that was like. You'll describe it for us. Um, because you engaged with the audience in a very different way. And while this is not a hilarious or even funny story, it is a really interesting um, option or variation rather of of an actor's nightmare not know, knowing what the audience is going to do exactly yeah. i mean the play um is uh, an examination really of displacement um and i played a formerly wealthy syrian refugee as you know you directed it yep <laughs> and helped develop it and we um I started the play by coming into the theater, into the lobby, as the audience was gathering, and with all of my stuff in a rolling cart, and <clears throat> clearly 
I was homeless mm -hmm. and clear, but I was I was not uh, crazy homeless. I was clean, but I would I, in Germany in particular. I was asking the audience in Arabic or in French uh, or in German if they could help me to find a woman's shelter. And the responses I got were people screaming at me mm. to leave them alone and to get out of the theater, and it was horrifying and. I remember when I came into the theater itself um, and I sat in the audience, <laughs> people were moving away from me in droves. And I'm asking people in the theater, so imagine their surprise when the lights go down and I walk up on stage mm -hmm. because of their behavior to me. And the same thing in New Mexico when I was, uh, I'd come in. Two times in New Mexico, two different women tried to bodily throw me out of mm. the theater, literally took me and said you're homeless you you know you, this is not where you belong you need to get out of here there's going to be a show here and I'm trying to stay in character and trying to tell them uh I just you know in in my Arabic voice that I I am looking for a place say there is no self shade I, I, I there's no shelter for you um and one woman said to me uh, I said, I'm not asking for money. Yeah, sure, you're not. Mm. I mean, it was really mm -hmm, awful mm -hmm. the way people treated me. And then the the final thing was when I was in New York and I came into the theater. My brother mm -hmm. was in the audience mm -hmm. with my cousins, and he didn't recognize me. So when I came in, I, he said to my cousin, oh, no, now Liz is going to have to deal with this. <laughs> It's so funny that he had oh. no idea that it was me. But it just goes to show how people leap to conclusions and Absolutely. how people's first response is uh, one of uh, fear mm -hmm. or loathing mm -hmm. or um, anger. Yeah. You know, uh, so imagine, I mean, I, I understood firsthand what it feels like to be a refugee in a, in a land where you don't speak the language and you're not wanted. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it so, was a powerful way to start the, the yeah, play. And still I remember going. when I was there, right, and I would have you sit next to me. Right, just right. My little protective uh, instincts. Anyway, well, thanks for sharing that. Thanks. And I now I would love to launch into um, <laughs> part of your professional background that would look really great on a resume, on your acting resume. It's quite unique. It's the uh, Barnum, Bailey, and Huffman Circus. <laughs> Circus. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, it's so interesting because in Germany, that seemed to be the one thing that all of the press remembered sure. that I was in the Ringling Brothers and Barnum yeah. and Bailey Circus. And I don't even know how they found that out, but they did. And uh, that seems to be my calling card, you know, that it's unique, I, like I, was I said. a member of the Ringling Brothers, which so, is a fun thing to have experienced. And and uh, having experienced a relationship with elephants and... Yes, uh, yes. My so elephant's name was Jilda. She was very sweet. Not Gilda, Jilda. Jilda. Okay. Yes, yes. She was a lovely big elephant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else could she be? What else could she be? Most of the time she was gentle until she wasn't. And what, tell me about that. Yeah, well, this is Chicago. Okay. And I'm just going to say that Chicago, I had toured all over the United States in the circus. And when you're in the Ringling Brothers Circus, you are living on a circus train, which is quite an experience because I'm traveling with the smallest man in the world, Mishu, who used to try to pinch all the women's, you know, behind. Hey, he had good. Because he was so tiny. He was, you had to look out for him. And there were, um, I mean, you know, uh, Jewel knew the lion um, the lion, lion tamer? tamer, who was uh, kind of an Edgar Winter look-alike, and oh wow! In one of the one of the towns, I think it was Arizona, he stuck his head in the lion's mouth as he does, and the lion bit down, and <gasps> that was really interesting. <gasps> Actually, once Jewel and I walked the lion down the streets of some city. I don't remember. Well, we got in so much trouble. Anyway, it was <laughs> just <laughs> taking him for a stroll. Just taking him for a stroll. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it was filled with the most amazing characters, you know, and um, to be a showgirl in the circus. I, the fact that I even got into the circus was uh, bizarre. Well, what did bring so, you well, into it, it? It, it? I had no intention of, I had n never even seen a circus. Right. So I, I was a dancer in New York and, I went to actually get my photos taken, uh, you know, your actor shots. And shots. I had gone to, the, this was this very famous photographer in New York, Nick Granito. I mean, everybody went to Nick Granito way back then. And I had gone to him when I first came to New York. I think I was 19. 
And it was like a year and a half later, and I went back for second shots. And the first thing he said to me is, boy, you look old. And I was devastated. Oh, God. I was abs I mean, 20, 20 years old. Wow. I'm 21 years old. And I'm absolutely <laughs> devastated. Over the hill now. <laughs> Over the hill, completely <laughs> thinking that I was, I was done for. Yeah. And I was sitting on the stoop outside of his studio crying my oh, eyes God. out because I thought, oh, my God, I'm old. <laughs> and he said it was awful. And uh, this beautiful girl comes into my view, and she's all made up, a dancer, clearly a dancer. You know, she's got all these glitter all over her eyes. And she says, you know, what's wrong? And I, he just said I was old. And she's like, falling into tears and she and I got into conversation it turns out that she was a showgirl in the mm, circus okay. and um, I had no idea about that and she was telling me how much money she was making in the circus and that they were going on a west coast tour and then she said hey you know uh, a, a girl left the circus last night oh. and you know they usually have auditions with hundreds and hundreds of girls yeah what do you what do you say if you come to the circus and I'll introduce you to the head of the circus, Charlie Bauman, and maybe they can they'll just put you right in? And I'm thinking, yeah, right. You know, okay. Well, I was right around the corner from Madison Square Garden, so I said, eh, you know what? I've never seen a circus, so I'll I'll go. And she had left my name at the backstage, so. I went in and I rode up in the elephant, rode up in the elevator with a whole car full of clowns. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, "This is surreal, right? This is just like I can't believe that I'm 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 doing this." I'm I, I I and then I go into Madison Square Garden to watch the show and I see the three rings and I, the, the whole spectacle of it, and I was blown away. Um, and so afterwards, uh, Charlie Bauman comes out. <laughs> My audition. <laughs> what was your audition? He just looked at me. I was I was quite hot back then. Oh, you know? I and know. I've he, seen he, photos. He looked at me up and down and went, okay, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> the, the next thing I knew, I was signing a contract, and I was leaving town in a week. And I had to learn how to ride elephants in a week and go on this. I mean, it was just, it was insane. So speaking of elephants. Yes, elephants, yes. Well, learning to ride elephants. I mean, who knows how to ride an right. elephant? I, I was terrified. But um, I learned to ride my elephant. And, you know, when you're in the circus, you're doing all these dances. And they give you these <laughs> fantastic you know, glittery costumes. I mean, it was, it was into a world I could not possibly comprehend at that time. It was surreal. I remember when I called my mother and said, are you sitting down? And she <laughs> right. said, why? And I said, I think you really need to sit down on this one. And I told her that I had just joined Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. And she just said, I'm running away for the circus. Right? Well, no, there was this long silence, really long silence. And I'm like, mom, mom and all she said was well it's where you belong <laughs> and I thought right okay oh this thanks so, mother thanks, dear Bob. I mean it was just kind of crazy so um you know I toured the the mm -hmm. all across the west coast it was fantastic it was really great but by the time we got to the last city we were going to be in Chicago for I think a month, something like that. I was ready to leave. Okay. I mean, things had happened that were kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. There's some really dicey stuff that goes on in, in, in the circus. Can and, imagine. You know, you, you really scary stuff. And because of the way I got into the circus, I, I was immediately, by most of the Eastern European acts, treated like a gypsy. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this. I didn't know why they wouldn't speak to me for the longest time mm. because they really had suspicions because I didn't come in like most normal right. actor or, right. or dancers. Anyway, um, uh, in Chicago, it came to the opening night in Chicago. And <laughs> we, I don't know why, but every opening of the circus in Chicago is Democrat night. You know, Chicago is a dicey political town oh, to yeah. begin with, right? And they, whoever it was that was in office at that time, I, I can't even remember, they buy out the um, entire uh, huge Coliseum or wherever the heck we were mm -hmm. in uh, Chicago. And I remember that there were so, they had oversold it. It was packed wow. to the gills. Mm -hmm. And there were people who were kind of along the, 
the the three rings. They were they shouldn't have been standing there, but there was just so many people. SRO. And, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it was it was a very odd energy, you know. Mm. And they have the mayor speaking, and there's this all this uh, kind of um, political stuff going on. And I remember saying to one of the showgirls, "I don't like the way." tonight feels this just mm. feels like a really strange uh strange night mm -hmm. and i was right i have these instincts about things sometimes <laughs> and uh we come out for what is one of the spectacular numbers and these spectacular numbers involve you know the arrival of the elephants and the showgirls and my job is to sit on the elephant and wave my hand and look all fabulous and i remember my costume was you know i had this like big they have these big headdresses oh yeah and i felt like lucy you know because you, you, <laughs> you really couldn't move um and i was very tiny you know so i had this headdress that was five times bigger than i was and um standing there you know i was sitting on top of jilda my elephant and the elephants are getting kind of nervous. They're a little mm. skittish, right? We always had somebody w that was with each elephant, you know, and they have a bull hook just in case anything goes wrong. Well, the first elephant, I was the third elephant in line. And the first elephant was George, the meanest elephant that there ever was. That was when I first learned how to ride the elephant was on George, a mm. terrifying, big mean elephant. It's like, if you can ride me, you can not ride any right, of us. Right, right. Well, um, we started to come into the arena and the noise from, you know, how many thousands and thousands of Democrats was just <laughs> humongous. And I could feel Jilda kind of, uh, you know, shaking her head. And when they shake their head, they're, they're, you're kind of ha having to... Uh, grip with your legs to hold on to her because your eye you know you're supposed to have your hands up elbow as you're elbow, waving, wrist, elbow wrist, wrist. Waving, right and it's like you know <laughs> i'm trying not to betray the fact that she's acting weird well the elephants start moving out and all of a sudden george the first mm -hmm. elephant this was actually terrible george rears up and throws the woman that's on him into the audience what and he does a headstand <laughs> Because that's how they actually can really hurt people. He did just a headstand. There were about, I don't know, 10 or 12 people that were injured from this what thing. What happened I to mean, the girl she, on the... She was okay because she landed on a bunch of people. Bunch of Democrats. Bunch of Democrats. But then... <laughs> all, but then... He and all the rest of the elephants, including oh, Jilda, no. reared up and <gasps> took off. What? And I'm telling you, <laughs> you have where? never. They went running. And I mean, I'm. You've never lived until you've been on the back of a charging elephant. I think and not. I am. And forget about waving to anybody. I grab onto Jilda's ears, and I'm holding on for dear life. Elephants move really fast when what? they want to. I mean, really, really fast, and they were. They were out of control. And the people with the bull hooks are trying to stop these elephants. And I'm thinking, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Bet. And this is going to be, this is going to be my epitaph. <laughs> Died on a charging elephant. I mean, what am I going to do? I mean, where, how do you get off of a charging elephant? Right. You really don't. Unless they right. throw you. Right. I'm trying to picture in a circus, where was, are they running? Where they're, is there to they run? Actually, well, because they're oh, around the, They're running around the Oh, three, okay. <laughs> the, three the audience rings. probably thinks, this is great. Right, right. No, it was crazy. It was really crazy because of course people got hurt and there were so many people around the perimeter that everybody oh, scattered scrambled. Was, and and but I didn't care about any of no, those no, people. No. All I could think about was how do I get off this charging elephant? Right. I can't stop her. She and were you thumping oh, around? Like, how did you no, stay I was, on? I had my arms wrapped around her and holding on my to her God. ears. Because oh. there's nothing else to hold on to. It was really terrible. They finally got them. To settle My down. Oh, God. And I, I mean, all of us, all of us, the whole herd of elephants <laughs> And showgirls, my my showgirl hats yep. tipped over to one side. Ricky, I, I looked, I looked like a showgirl gone wrong. I mean, it was really awful. So that was the opening night in Chicago. Jeez, and that's heart attack oh producing. Oh my God, I had a bad feeling about Chicago the whole mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. There were just so many things that happened. I mean, another incident didn't involve me, but it involved another showgirl. She was standing in front of. Charlie Bauman's 
Bengal uh, tigers who are, you know, absolutely gorgeous. And she was standing there posing as we did, you know, about to go into a dance move. And the t uh, one of the, li um, the tigers just took a nice <coughs> swipe oh. through his cage. I was right next to her, you know, and she, she got scratched a wow. bit, but she moved out just in case. But I'm thinking to myself... These are crazy big animals. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to mess with these right? big crazy animals. Yes. I'm so. just I'm picturing you like looking like three martinis later oh with my your God. big it headdress. Was hilarious. Uh, and yes. what did the audience did the audience think, uh oh, that was scary? Or did they really think, you know, most audiences are buying it? They think it's on purpose. You know, there was so much noise yeah. that I don't know whether it's, maybe some of them thought that it was magnificent yeah. because there's all these <laughs> crazy elephants running around, but then there's the other side of the three rings where the people were actually getting carted away and yeah. ambulances and stuff. Oh and my it was God. just like crazy. The behind the scenes of the circus. Behind the scenes of the 9 circus. 911. Right. Oh, again with the circus? <laughs> you know, it, 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 it fed into, I'm afraid of, I mean, it, everything it, now. I'm afraid no. of everything. <laughs> I was, I never rode horses or anything because right. I was, I loved the way they looked, but I was always afraid. Yeah. They're big things, right? But imagine. Compared to an elephant, they're like a dog. Right. And, and Jilda had been so nice all along. So, but were she you, was not nice that day. Were you worried that she would get up, you know, that George would start something again? And you know what I mean? How did you continue for a month? Uh, something else happened, right? Yes. Yes, there there was another really horrific thing that happened that <laughs> that um, uh, makes me never want to ever go back to Chicago <laughs> because Chicago just seemed to be a cursed town. But yeah, I had uh, as part of um, part of the spectacular numbers was that the showgirls were to dance all around with the clowns and the three rings, and you had little dance numbers and whatever. And in one of the numbers, what one of the big numbers, spectacular numbers, they had these plastic, like um, fiberglass, I suppose, seahorses that you're supposed to get on. And the seahorses are then uh, pulled up 25 feet in the air. So and they're wired? So, yeah, they're... yeah, they're wired up to this thing and you're pulled up 25 feet in the air and you're waving and you're waving, you know, and then you come down and you get off the seahorse and say, well, I am terrified of heights. Oh, God. I mean, Me more too. terrified of heights than you could possibly imagine. So I used to bribe and pay the guy that ran my seahorse uh -huh. to, to, I would dance and pretend that... Um, I was the, the solo dancer because the other ones would get onto their seahorse and I'd still be dancing to kill time. Okay. So that by the time I got on my seahorse, he only had to bring me up just oh. a little bit and I'd come back down again. And right. we had that down. Mm -hmm. Totally had that down. Well, I was I got had gotten used to that, you know. So I didn't think about it. And so there I was dancing in my uh, whatever outfit I was wearing in my headdress. And I get on my seahorse, and it starts to climb, and it climbs, uh -oh. and it climbs, and I'm like, what the heck? Where's, hey, where's hey, George? Hey, hey, or where, what's where, his name? Where's my guy? And I look down, and it's not my guy. Oh. And I have no idea who's running my seahorse. And uh, the next thing I know, I am 25 feet in the air, and I am so scared. Forget about waving. Yeah. Forget about anything. <laughs> I'm sitting, I'm holding on to my seahorse and I'm going, this is crazy, this is crazy. And then it stops. Oh my God. And it's, it's like being the top of a, of a Ferris wheel, right? All the way, imagine all the way at the top of a circus, oh. which, so you're all the way up there and where all the, the trapeze people are and you know, <laughs> that, things like that. And, and it's stuck. And I'm like, it's not moving. It's not moving. And I look, I, I, I could hardly look down right, because right. I was so frightened. And I, but I did look down and I hear this guy at the bottom going, it's stuck. <laughs> and Thanks, the Einstein. next thing I know, literally like I'm in a Max Sennett movie, <laughs> all these guys come with these big, like trampoline oh, things, you know, to, to, they're, they're all coming underneath me. And then, and, and then Charlie Bauman comes running out. And they can't get the, the thing to work. And I'm 25 feet up in the air. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get down. I don't know what to do. And I'm, I'm paralyzed with fear. So somebody, and I don't know who it was, decides that I should shimmy down this rope. 
that they swung over to me. And they're like, it's okay. Just j j j by, at this point, by this point, the entire circus and the entire three rings is like a pin drop. Oh, my God. Right? Everybody is <gasps> like this. And, and they um, had trampolines, though, for you to jump in case they wanted to jump? In case I jump. fell. Oh, in case you in fell. In case I fell. Okay. And, they're, and they're, you know, literally like Max yeah. Senate people yeah. moving back and forth. And I'm no, like, she's going that way. I'm no, not, no, she's I'm going, not going this way. Do this. I'm not leaving my safe, secure seahorse. I'm never leaving this seahorse. You've got to like, you've got you to get it fixed. I don't know what you're going to do, but I was so scared. So they put this rope. Now, I'm a city girl. You know? <laughs> and, my, and my hands are not like rope rope ready right <laughs> so i know that i've got to leave that seahorse and just grab onto this rope and then shimmy down 25 feet where well, did the rope come from did they drop it it was somehow? one of the rigging oh, ropes okay and and then it was like, close enough a, to grab that I, well they swung it to me and you caught it there you go <laughs> yes well, I don't know if you would could realize that if you leave a seahorse and you grab the rope, the weight of your body swings oh, the rope. Oh my and God. I swung three times and the whole audience is screaming. <laughs> and meanwhile, there's ambulances and there's I mean, there's like a million people down there. And I'm like, I can't believe this is happening to me. You know? And so I had to, and I don't know how I did it to this day. I will never know how I did it. Survival, mm -hmm, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I shimmied down that rope with everything I had. And I got to about the top of Charlie Bauman's head. <laughs> and I figured I'm safe enough and I passed out. Oh, got cold. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I don't know, I was carried out of the three rings. The big applause. I was going to say, I'm sure it was standing ovation. Oh, my God. I'm sure God. some people thought that was like the highlight, right? That was on yeah. purpose, too. Uh, I don't this, know. Well, they you know, could have, you know, because the clowns were always doing yeah, crazy, yeah. silly things like that. They pretend that, oh, somebody's stuck, and you got to jump, jump. Right, or... right. I've never been so frightened in my oh, entire I... life. I hated that seahorse for the rest. I mean, <laughs> I, actually, I left the circus after Chicago. You that was it. <laughs> that was the line on I'm the seahorse. They wanted me to renew my contract. I'm like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I like, could see never. them saying, you know, we actually, that works so well. We're going to do it on purpose. We right. won't, you know... We'll pretend you're stuck up there. But... You know, that, that has actually been the bane of my existence as an actor is heights. Uh -huh. uh, because uh, I've, I've done shows where, you know, you have to be up on a big, tall platform. And it is, it is paralyzing to me. Oh, sure. Yeah. That's how, okay, my heart is like beating. So to calm down, well, it's just been a pleasure having you here, Elizabeth. Thank We're going to uh, just tie it up with one I think this was the precursor to your your terror on stage in a circus when you were a young lassie in high school doing oh, a geez. play yes yes and I was doing damn Yankees yes and I was playing Lola. Lola yes yes and I was um you know all full of myself I had the lead and I thought I was fabulous and um I'm dancing whatever Lola wants Lola gets you know and I'm, I'm not all of what's 16, yeah. 17, trying to be all sexy. And I did my dance, and I danced off stage, and I walked right into, or walked right into me, st a stagehead coming on with a bench that hit me right in the head, knocked me cold. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the next thing I know, and I'm in high school, oh, and God. I don't know where this came from, but one of my friends who was in the play was pouring a bottle of scotch whiskey <laughs> down my throat and smacking me and I reeked of alcohol and 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 they I woke up and they got me up cuz I had to be on for the very next the next yes, scene and yes. shoved me back on stage and I'm reeking of scotch <laughs> and I'm like 16 years old and I I've got this huge lump on my oh, head God. and I had no idea where I was and and I'm I'm looking around at everybody and I know that I'm supposed to do something. So I literally just danced <laughs> suggestively. Of course. <laughs> all the way off the other side of the stage. <laughs> and I had to say to whoever was on the other side, say, What scene is this? Yes. What Where times are do we? I say? <laughs> yeah. So I, I uh, started I mean, you know, when you start as young as I did, um, there, there are so many stories, it's hard to figure out which one is more nightmarish than the other. But being in front of an audience and having these unexpected things happen to you is part of the game. 
It builds character and yeah. resilience. Yeah, it absolutely <laughs> does. Well, thank you for sharing just a smidgen of your horrifying experiences <laughs> in the theater, which you are still married to to this day. And thank I'm sure there'll be more. Goodness, of course. <laughs> right. Thanks, my love. Thank you so much for tuning into The Actor's Nightmare. If you have a story you'd like to share and want to be on the show, it's really easy. Just record it into your phone and send it in an email to actorsnightmarepodcast at gmail.com. And remember to subscribe to the Actors Nightmare Podcast. You can go to our website at www.actorsnightmarepodcast.com, choose subscribe, and then choose the platform that you like to use to listen to podcasts. Please subscribe if you like what you hear. And again, I want to thank our sponsors, Artist Repertory Theater, Portland's premier regional theater company, and to Bob Conklin, an ardent sponsor of all things theatrical here in Portland. And finally, to Real Estats, providing statistical overviews for residential real estate in Oregon and Washington. This is Luann Moldovan. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next time on The Actor's Nightmare. <laughs>